Hi everyone, this is Jason from the Global Enablement Team here at Palo Alto Networks. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to pull reports using the XML API. All right, here we are on my firewall. And as you can see, I've got my built-in reports here available to me in the web UI. Now, if I want to retrieve these reports through the XML API or programmatically or with a script or a third-party tool, well, then I have a few things I need to do. First, I want to show you a little bit about what that API looks like. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to this other tab. We're going to use the API browser. So I'm going to actually put in um, the IP address here of my firewall. And I'm going to add API to the end of that. And this actually launches a pre-built API browser. So this shows me the different ways in which I can interact and communicate with the firewall through the application programming interface. It's a REST-based API, and I can do several different things here. I can actually issue configuration commands. Uh, I can do commit operations, other operational commands, retrieve logs, and the like. I can do user ID mappings. What we're here for is to talk about reports. When I click on reports, it shows me I got three different types of reports, predefined, dynamic, and custom. Predefined reports, well, this is where I was just at in the web UI. When I click on this, it shows me the URL. This is the actual path I need to issue to the firewall for it to retrieve the actual SAS application usage report. Now, through the API browser, it's really easy to do. I just click on this, opens up a new tab, and here's my XML report. So what exactly is happening here? How is this magic occurring? I'm seeing the exact same report as I'm seeing when I come over here and I click on SAS application usage, it's the same report, only I'm getting it in an XML format here so that I can consume it through some other application or through some other means. Well, the magic is, of course, in the API itself. In real simple terms, we've got a client, a REST client, that enables it to talk to our REST-based API in the firewall. The request itself is in an HTTP type request. We saw that just a moment ago. I'm indicating the name of the firewall, but then there's the request parameters and the values. So this is the who, what, where, and how kind of information that the API uses. It consumes the request and then turns around and provides that XML response. That's essentially how the XML API works. And we're, of course, doing this for the purpose of retrieving reports. And as we saw in the actual API browser, there are three kinds of reports that we can retrieve. There's dynamic, which is the ACC reports. Then we've got predefined. The firewall has about 40 or so predefined reports that we can retrieve. And then, of course, we can do custom reports as well. So how do I actually use the XML API from a third-party tool or a script? Well, here are the steps. First, we have to enable access to the XML API, and that means we're going to need to set up an administrator role and configure an API key, and then we can use that third-party application to actually send a request, those HTTP requests, with the appropriate parameters and values, and we should be golden. So let's actually walk through these steps, and let me show you how to configure access to the XML API. It's worth knowing as a best practice, you want to create a separate admin account for your XML API access. And I'm going to start by showing you how to do just that. I'm back in my firewall. I've pre-created an account for this purpose, XML admin here. This account has been assigned the appropriate permission to retrieve reports through the XML. And the way I did that is through a custom admin profile right here. Let me show you what that looks like. Under admin roles, I've got admin role right here, and if I select on this, I have XML API, and you can see I've granted report access. So I've enabled that, and then assign that to my administrator account that I created. Now the next step is to create an API key. To do that, I'm gonna actually use a third-party tool here. I'm gonna use curl. I've downloaded curl. Um, onto my Windows machine here. It's a Linux-based type of tool, and the newer versions of Linux, um, Linux, I meant Windows, also has a built-in um, uh, version of, of, of curl as well. Let me bring this up here. And so what I'm doing is I'm 
actually running a get command against the API. Specifically, what I want to do is generate an API key. And I'm putting in the XML admin. This is the account I created with its password. And this is going to create for me an access key. So when I hit enter to this, a key should appear here. There we go. Now it's pretty long and gnarly. So what I like to do is turn around and actually redirect this to um, a location um, so that I can actually copy and paste it easy enough. So I'm going to actually uh, redirect it to a text file and then we'll do notepad key.txt and then we'll actually adjust this a little bit here so I can see it a little easier. There we go. So here's the key. So I'm going to highlight this. You want to include the equal sign at the end and copy that. Okay, and we're going to reuse this whenever we issue an HTTP request. We need to, of course, have the API key so it's an authenticated request. Now, one thing I want to point out in my curl command here, um, it is case sensitive. So there is a difference, for instance, between a capital X and lowercase x. So you want to make sure you get that right. The other thing is our documentation um, has you use a single quote when you issue this command. But because I'm running curl from Windows, uh, Windows prefers uh, a double quote like this. So that's just a couple of gotchas there when you do this. All right, so we've got our key, we've set up our account, we're actually ready to move on to the next step, which is to issue HTTP requests. And I'm gonna go ahead and use curl once again to issue that request and retrieve a report. Now, real quickly, let me just touch base with you. I'm going to actually issue my HTTP request. Remember the format here. This is our URL or our URI, and I need to actually identify who I'm going to be talking to, what am I looking for, where is it located, and then I also have to list the API key. So we got who, what, where, and how here. And so let's look at an example. So here's my example. I'm listing the firewall right here. Uh, here's the type report. Report type is a predefined report. Then the specific report name. I'm looking for top vulnerabilities. That's what I'm looking for. And it wraps around here. And then there's the key. And so I've actually copied and pasted that big long key uh, right there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to this. And there we go. There's my top vulnerabilities in an XML format. Now, one of the great things about the API is the ability to use additional tools to be able to interact with the firewall. And so here's another example. This time I'm using, um, I'm using a REST client called Insomnia. And, you know, get the play on words there, Insomnia. Um, and what I'm going to do here is use this to retrieve a report. So uh, I've got already put into the get field the location of the firewall, and I've also added the key here. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go back to the REST API, and here's the top applications through the API browser and the firewall. So I'm going to cheat because I'm just going to copy this. So I don't have to type all this out. And I'm going to bounce back into Insomnia, and I'm going to actually add that. I'm going to just paste that up there. And then I can actually import this so I can fill out the fields here. So Insomnia allows me to kind of break out the URI. If I want to, I can actually type them out. And then we'll hit send. And there we are. That's just another tool that's uh, aware of the REST API that allows me to go and retrieve reports. So this is one of the reasons why the XML API is so important and so powerful. One final important point, some of the requests you send to the API are synchronous in nature, and sometimes they're asynchronous. The difference is this, synchronous means you get an instant response from the firewall, asynchronous means the firewall has to take a little bit of time so it issues you instead of job ID and then you come back afterwards and you use the job ID to retrieve the report, especially for those kinds of reports that are like ACC type of reports. Let me show you how this works. Okay, I'm back on the API browser. Notice down here it says async equals yes. That's because reports are asynchronous in nature. To give you an idea, I'm going to go to dynamic, which are ACC reports. I'm going to just grab one here in our list. Uh, like for instance, uh, let's do um, uh, let's do top egress zones. Let's click on this. There we go. And then I'm going to click on this. And then we'll go over here and notice it gives me a job ID instead of giving me the report. Now, what do I do with this? 
Well, I can go to the CLI and I can check the progress of the job. Um, once I've got the job completed, then what I can do is I can actually go back and use some of the same tools I used before. This time I'm going to reference, though, the job ID. So, for example, uh, here's a command here, and I'm going to actually change one field here. So I'm going to do um, report action get, but what report am I getting? Well, that's the job ID field right here. So I'm going to change that to 280. And so this is our um, kind of our magic number right there based on what uh, um, my earlier request uh, included. So I'm going to hit enter to this. And there we go. So if the report's finished, then I can go and retrieve the results of that job. So that's another thing to be aware of is that reports are asynchronous in nature, which means sometimes you'll get a job ID depending on uh, how large the report is. Now, many of you watching this video might already have a plan for the data once it's in XML, but if you're not clear as to why this is valuable, well, XML is extremely flexible. So once I get it in XML, I can do a lot with it. So for instance, one of the things I can do here is I can go ahead and save this into an XML file, and then I can consume that in other applications. Maybe I want to convert it into JavaScript object. Maybe I want to convert it here uh, into HTML so I can publish it on a web page. So let me actually just copy that. And we'll paste that in here and use this little free converter here just to give you an example of that here. Uh, maybe I want to publish it on SharePoint. Or maybe I just can use uh, Excel, for instance. Let me open this up in Excel. Well, I'll convert it as an XML table. And so XML is really versatile. It can be consumed by a lot of different applications. And in Excel, I can turn around and maybe just kind of highlight a few fields if I want and, you know, the, hit the F11 button and automatically I've got a chart. Um, or maybe I want something a little bit more whiz bane like this tool here. I can come in here. Let's open up my XML file. Um, now I've got uh, a lot of other tools that this um, developer tool allows me to use. So for instance, I can change this uh, to say enhance grid view and expand this out if I need to. And then I can just come in here, right click and create a chart uh, out of that. So here I can choose what columns I want to include uh, like so. And then I got a basic chart. So there's a lot of things I can do with it once it's in XML. And that's the, that's the magic, of course, behind that standard and the ability of the API. All right, that's it for me for now. I hope you learned a lot and how to use the XML API, specifically how to use it to retrieve reports. And I hope you had a lot of fun doing that. I know I have. Until next time, stay secure and get some rest. Get it? Rest? Never mind.